today on Power of Faith. So if I take the word of a king, Jesus, right here, and I get this from being in this book into my heart, and then I release it out of my heart to my situation, power, power. But I have to put the do with it. What doest thou? Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durbin with your family of Faith Victory Church here in Frankfort, Kentucky, and just delighted to be able to share in the truths of God's Word once again. Luke 1, 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And that's good news in the day we're living in. So uh, I just encourage you to just, you know, dial down for the next half hour and just, just uh, get your Bible out and and see whether these things I'm teaching is true or not. Or if, you, if you're if you a Bible scholar, uh, be encouraged by what you're hearing because we have this much time together and we're going to make the most of it. Now, last time we were together, I was talking about faith. And uh, we've discovered that uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews 11:6. And we found out in Romans chapter 1, uh, 16 and 17, that the just shall live by faith. And then in Hebrews 6, 12, through faith, we inherit the promises. So faith is pretty important. And uh, again, 1 John 5, 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So uh, when I discovered these things years ago, I said, okay, uh, if I'm supposed to live by faith, uh, what is this faith? And, uh, you know, because I thought faith was, you know, the name of my denomination or my belief that there was a God. Well, uh, you know, you can squeeze that in there. I mean, it's important to believe there's a God. There's some that don't. Uh, but faith is a spiritual force. Faith is a law. And when you uh, begin to understand that and operate in it, then things begin to turn around in your life. Uh, you know, here it is 31 years later, and, you know, God turned my marriage around. He turned my physical condition around. He turned this crazy mind around. He turned our finances around, just everything. I live a good life. Life is good. And it's because I discovered faith and, and uh, how to use it. So uh, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So uh, when you hear this word preached, rightly divided, not just any preacher preaching, because there's some doubt and unbelieving preachers out there that'll preach you out of your faith. You know, they'll tell you how that God is causing all these uh, calamities in your life and there's a reason for it. And he's trying to teach you something. That's not true. That's not true. God teaches us through his word and by the Holy Spirit. Thank God for that. But uh, we looked at last time together on the subject about faith and corresponding action. And again, in James chapter 2, verse 14 what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Can faith heal him? Can faith prosper him? Can faith bless him? Not if there's no corresponding action. Corresponding action. You got to act what you believe. I'm not saying pretend. I'm talking about 
action. You're not, it's not like you're acting out a, a play uh, from a script that you're pretending to be somebody else in the script. No, you are who you are. This is a script and you're putting action to what has been provided by the Lord Jesus Christ. Very important. Verse 17 says in James chapter 2, Even so faith, if it hath not works or corresponding action, is dead, being alone. In other words, you're leaving your faith all by itself. Even though faith cometh, you got it in your heart. Faith speaketh, you send it, you, it's, it's, it, you send it to your mountain, you send it to your circumstance, you send it to the debt, you send it to the pain, you send it to that whatever area of challenge that you're facing, you send it, but then you laying around on the couch and not putting corresponding action to what you actually believe. See, when you believe something, you got to act on it. You know, uh, you want a job? Well, God going to give me a job. I believe I received my job. Does God want you to have a job? He wants you to have a good job. He wants you to have a, a, a great job. But, you know, probably that job ain't coming to your front door. Probably. Yeah, you know, it can. But more than likely, it's not. More than likely, you're going to have to go out and put some action to what you believe, see? And, uh, you know, you might have to pass through a season of a job you don't like to get to where uh, the employment, the career that God has for you uh, in your life. So it says, even so faith that have not works is dead being alone. So, okay, I got to do something here. I got to put action to this. I remember back in the day, uh, when I got born again, we lived on an eight-acre farm. We called it the Lazy Eight. And my wife and I, uh, you know, we, we got born again three days apart. And then shortly after that, I got filled with the Spirit of God. And I mean, we were just, I mean, we were two babies and the Lord just excited. And we're just devouring the Word of God. We're just, we're just uh, reading the Word and listening to, back in those days, cassette tapes on on preaching and so on and so forth. We're just, we're just having a time. And I was walking uh, through my farm one day and I, I said this uh, to the Lord. I said, Lord, this, this property, property would be real nice if it had water on it. Didn't have no water on it. Just, just as dry, it was in the middle of a, of a drought, actually. Uh, and uh, he said, there is water on this land. I said, well, I don't see no water. He said, come here, I'll show you where it is. You say, the Lord said, come here, I'll show you where it is. That's exactly right. See, if you'll sit and, and, and consume this word, then you'll, you'll have the leading of the Holy Ghost and his voice can get so strong in you, it's like somebody talking to you like I'm talking to you. And he took me to a particular part of those eight acres. I mean, we're talking eight acres. One little spot. Right here is water. I, I took a rock and I marked that spot. Now I went into the, our farmhouse and I walked in there to where my wife was. And I said, uh, Alberta, that's my wife's name, Alberta. There's water, water on our property. The Lord showed me where there's water on the property. She said, I know. He told me there's water on the property just a while ago. I said, what? He said, sure did. And we had an aerial shot where people come, come and, and, and uh, take pictures of your property and then they sell you that. Well, we, we had bought an aerial shot of our eight acres and we had it framed and it was on the wall. Still have that picture to this day. And uh, she said, yeah. And she went over to... Without me saying anything, she went over to that picture and put her finger right on the very spot that the Lord had showed me. I said, well, look at there. See? So uh, now I'm going to dig a well. And so, you know, I asked around to some uh, neighbors there, and they said, there ain't no water on that property. I even went to the people that owned the property before, and they said, 
we 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 tried three times to uh, dig a well there. There there is no water there, and if you if you ever did hit water, just be that old sulfur water. Well, you know that discouraged me. See, but you know I I, I called up this drilling company this, that drills wells, and they said, yeah, uh, we'll come out there and drill this well. Well, uh, three weeks went by, and that company never showed up. And I just let it go. Just let it go. All right, forget about it. You know, that was just that day, you know, and uh, this and that. Well, I was praying, and the Lord said, I, I thought I told you there was water on this property. I said, well, I called the people, and they didn't come. Now, you better listen to this. Just because something didn't line up and happen in a certain amount of time doesn't mean you miss God or doesn't mean that it wasn't to be. So after getting uh, kind of, if you allow it, chewed out by God, I called that company up. And they said, uh, we're sorry, Mr. Derber, but because of the drought, uh, we've been drilling wells and just been breaking our uh, drills because it's so dry everywhere. We ain't hitting nothing. But we just got a new drill in and we'll be out to your property a couple days from now. So a couple days went by, and I and 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 I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I said they they supposed to come today. I said, uh, now I don't know nothing about drilling a well. I said, uh, how deep they supposed to go? How much this thing gonna cost? He said, it'll be a hundred foot. It'll cost seven hundred dollars. I said, well, okay. So I looked at my wife. I said, the Lord spoke to me in prayer this morning. Said uh, that well would be 100 foot deep and cost us $700. She said, well, all right. Well, sure enough, here come that big old truck in, you know, and I let the guys back in there in the field and took them all the way back to that spot where I had it marked. And I told those guys, I said, you know, they're backing up this big old well digging truck massive thing and I said you see this spot right here that drill has to be right over this spot exactly you got that and and they said uh, yes Mr. Derber he said what, what makes you think that there's water there did you witch for it that's what they said did you witch for it I said no I didn't witch for it God told me there's water right there God told you yep and then I was making sure they're backing up right and the Lord said what are you doing Go in and get uh, them something cold to drink and bring them out here. It was hot. Boy, I'll tell you what, right in the middle of that drought. I said, Lord, you know, I got to make sure they on that. Go in, get them something to drink. So I had to run all the way back to the farmhouse, give them something to drink, came back, come back out there. And when I did, they had backed that. You couldn't have backed it any more perfect than what they had it. And so uh, they were thankful for that cold drink. And, you know, they cranked up that drill and dust was flying. I mean, just dust was flying. And you know, a couple of our uh, friends and neighbors, you know, they, they, they dropping by to watch, watch me, uh, you know, just throw money away, sitting on the fence over yonder. They're drilling, they put, go 20 feet down, nothing but dust, add another 20 foot link on it, go down, nothing but dust. I'm like, oh my, and now the enemy is screaming. And doubt and unbelief is just, you know, you ain't never heard God. What makes you think, you know, you're going to hit water? And all this stuff was just trying to overwhelm me, see? And uh, because I'm putting action to my faith by having them drill. So, uh, you know, what my eyes were telling me, and they're just sitting up against the truck like, you know, Okay, another dry well, you know, and, and the devil's screaming, people over there on the fence looking, you know, and they're just talking, probably laughing. I went up on the little hill there where the Lord had first told me there was water. And I would be uh, not telling you fully everything that happened if I didn't tell you 
tears come to my eyes. The pressure was so great. And uh, I, I got up there and I said, Lord, you're the one that told me to drill this. You said there was water on this land. I'm not going by what I see. And I just thank you, Lord, for water on this land. I give you praise. Tears, because my emotion is just going crazy. You, you know, you, you think you hear God and all this stuff. And I don't know how long I was up there. But all of a sudden, one of those uh, two guys hollers out, Mr. Derber, Mr. Derber. And I, you know, I, I turned around and looked back down there. There's water spewing everywhere. And boy, I tell you what, they, 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 they're dancing around down there. Well, I ran down there, you know, and uh, I, I'm excited. Water, I mean, water's spewing out like, like you know, it, it not just bubbling out, it's spewing out. I'm like, man, you know, and I said, I said, uh, hey, and they're, they're thrilled because they've hit water. And uh, I said to them, uh, what, what, what's going on? Well, you know, how deep are we? They said 68 feet. The Lord said 100. So I said, well, what do you do now? He said, well, it's customary once you, once you hit water to go another 20 feet down and then uh, to make sure you hit all the water tables under there to feed that well. Well, 68 plus 20 is 88. Well, it was 1988. I thought to myself, well, that's pretty close to 100. But then I said this to this guy. I said, uh, what would you do if you were me? He said, Mr. Derber, he said, I, I'm not trying to get your money, nothing like this, but I'm telling you what, this, this, you got you a whale right here. And if this was my property, I'm just telling you, you're asking me, if this was my property, I'd go 100 feet. I said, drill it. They drilled 100 feet, and they gave me the bill. I looked at it, $700. I said, okay, okay, okay. They told me, they said, your well is producing 10 gallons a minute. For those of you that don't understand the well language, you can run, we, he told me, he said, you can run this whole farm off three gallons per minute. You're running 10 gallons per minute. More than enough. Now, now, now see, if I hadn't followed up on what God had said, we would eventually run that water all the way into the barn for our animals in the barn. See, if we, if we hadn't listened uh, to what God said and put corresponding action with it. That water was there the whole time. Couldn't see it. Couldn't see it. See? Well, when, when, when that manifestation happened, I said, okay, look here. We're getting somewhere with this. We got to put action to what uh, we are believing. And James said that in verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. The body without the spirit is dead. That's how dead your faith can be if you don't put action with it. You have, you, if you've ever seen someone that's dead, you, there's, there is no action at all. Why? The spirit's not there. Gone. Gone. Either heaven or the other place. So as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith, if it does not have works, is dead also. Now the last thing me and you want is to have faith in our hearts and it be dead because we're not putting action with it. Confession is good. Speaking is good. It's necessary. That's what that's what releases faith uh, in the uh, creative power. But if you study the Word of God, you'll see that there's a whole lot of miracles that happen and ain't nobody saying nothing. They're just acting on what was said. 
You remember, uh, who was it? Naaman, the leper. Remember Naaman the leper? He went to the prophet because he heard he could be healed. And the prophet said, go dip in the Jordan seven times. Well, he got mad. He got mad. He thought, he thought he'd get healed a different way. He didn't, he didn't think corresponding action would be like that. He didn't, he didn't, he, 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 so he went away in a rage. But one of his servants said to him, look, Naaman, if that prophet had told you go fight 20 guys at one time by yourself, you'd have went and done it. He was a mighty warrior. He said, how much more is it to go dip in that Jordan? Now, he didn't go to that Jordan and be dipping saying, I'm the healed, 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 I'm the healed. Nope. He just did the saying of the prophet of the Lord. And when he did what he was told to do, he got the result that was supernatural. I mean, he came up the seventh time, all of his leprosy has gone. I mean, that, that, that's pretty, I've, 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 I've seen leprosy healed, but not to that degree to where I saw, you know, they brought a child to us when we were missionaries uh, in the islands and uh, he had just all these open sores all over his body. All he would wear was these little shorts, you know, and it's all he had on and all over his chest, his face, his arms, his legs, his feet, all these open sores. And uh, my wife said, I'm going to pray for you. And prayed for him. And the next day, the very next day, knock on our door. Open up that door and his, his entire body from head to toe, totally cleansed. All the sores gone. Now, I ain't talking about recovering. I'm talking about gone. See? So, uh, corresponding action is so important. Now, uh, my favorite verse in the Bible, I told all my kids when, if Jesus should tarry and, and I leave this planet by way of the grave, uh, you put this on my tombstone in big, bold letters. And uh, I've, I've, I've patterned my life this way. And it's Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. Matter of fact, you come to our church, you walk in our sanctuary, before you go in the sanctuary, over the sanctuary door, it, it says where the word of a king is, there is power. So Ecclesiastes 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? What are you doing? See? Well, you could take that like, Well, who would say to the king, What are you doing? Where the word of a king is, he can say what he wants to, and who's going to question what he's what he's saying? Yeah, okay. But how many of you know Jesus is our king? How many of you know he is the word? So where the word of King Jesus is, there is power. So if I take the word of a king, Jesus, right here, and I get this from being in this book, into my heart and then I release it out of my heart to my situation, power, power. But I have to put the do with it. What doest thou? See? And a lot of times your corresponding action, people around you ain't going to understand. They're going to think you flipped out. They're going to think, they're going to think you done lost your mind. What kind of church are you going to? What are, you know, because they're so locked into their five physical senses. We walk by faith, not by sight, not by our five physical senses. And so where the word of a king is, there is power. And who, 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 can, who can question what you're doing? See, don't you question and say, why am I doing this? No, you know why you're doing it. And, uh, the situation can be uh, 
Well, all right. Peter was confronted by a group of folk, and they said, uh, does your master pay taxes? He said, yeah, he paid taxes. Yeah, he pays them. But when he come in the, into the house, he went to get in the bag, go pay them taxes. Jesus stopped him. What are you doing, Peter? Uh, and then he asked him a question. Who do the children of king pay tax to? Well, they don't pay no taxes. They're free, right? Yeah. But we don't want to offend anybody. Go cast a hook. And the first fish that you bring up, open its mouth, and in it you're going to find a piece of money. Go pay not just my taxes, yours too. Okay. Where are you going, Peter? I'm going to go catch a fish that got money in it, its mouth. Now, see, Peter could have, he, he could have just sat down and said, and that's the craziest thing I've been fishing all my life. I ain't never, ever caught a fish that had money in its mouth. Certainly not enough to pay taxes. See? Now, he could, he could just say, okay, there's a fish out there. It's got money in its mouth. You come to me. No, you had to go cast a hook. You understand what I'm saying? You can't just believe something and say something and not do something. Faith has to move. Faith requires action. Faith requires you and I to uh, correspond with it. Do you believe this? Yes. Well, then we got to act like it. See? Well, let's go out to eat. I'll meet you over at the restaurant. Well, I'm, I'm not going over there until I know you're there. Send me a selfie with uh, the name of the restaurant so I know you're there. Then I'll come. Seeing is believing. No, somebody tells you you're going to go uh, to the restaurant and you'll meet you over there. Uh, just because they said it, now you put an action to it and you go there. That's the simple way. See? But faith has to move. Well, that little sand glass just keeps moving on us. I hope you enjoy uh, this teaching and you're getting inspired to, to put action to what you believe. Because if you do, that, that allows God to keep moving on your behalf. My favorite verse, Ecclesiastes 8, verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Be a blessing. <laughs>